How do you view China? And how have your opinions changed over time? I've been living in China for 12 years now, so I wanted to share how my opinions have changed on China over the last 12 years. In my last video, I talked about how my views had changed on the US after living abroad for so long. And I thought it'd be interesting to follow up with this video as part of my 12 years in China series. Be sure to watch my last video about the US after you finish watching this video. Okay, let's jump in with number 12, which is freedom in China. I have to say that before I came to China, my views were shaped mostly by American news, and although some of the opinions were true, most of them were twisted by an American narrative. Most of the media is anti-China, because the US has been fighting communism since the 1940s, and even before that if you track it a little bit closer, this means my opinions on China and freedoms in China were in line with American news. I believe China was imprisoning people for the simplest crimes or talking out against the government here. It wasn't until I moved here and lived here for a long time that I realized that for the average person, life is pretty normal. Most of the police are unarmed, which makes them more approachable, and personally I don't feel worried about safety or crime. I will admit that China still arrests a lot of people for breaking the law, and China has a high incarceration rate, but for the most part, on the day-to-day -day basis, living in China isn't too different than in the US. There are two big differences here in China, which are freedom of speech and censorship on the internet. Because I make videos about China and I live in China, I'm a little bit more concerned about what I say on camera. Also, because I use the internet every day, just like everyone else, internet censorship is noticeable. Many sites are blocked and you have to use a VPN to access most of the internet. Overall, my views have changed on freedoms in China, from this is a terrible country and they lock everyone up to, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's pretty normal. But they are much stricter on freedom of speech, protests, and internet censorship. And this is where you feel it kind of more on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, moving on to something a little bit lighter, to number 11 on our list, which is food. And I love Chinese food. And my opinion has actually uh, kind of did this weird little curve because my opinion of Chinese food was American Chinese food, which is very, very, very different than authentic Chinese food. So when I first came here, my opinion was Chinese food is really good because that's what I knew in America to, oh my God, what is this stuff? And Chinese food I didn't like at first to trying new things and then all of a sudden my opinion of Chinese food is way higher than it was in the United States because Chinese food in China is completely different. When I first arrived in China, I lost like 15 kilos because I couldn't find any food I liked. My first impressions of Chinese food was, this is awful. But after a few months, I tried many things and learned to love Chinese food. Authentic Chinese food is amazing. There are many different styles and dishes. This was a big shock to me when I first arrived in China. Now I love many dishes and will probably make a video just about food for this series. But enough about food, we are moving on to number 10 on the list, which is work. I've been working in China for over a decade now, and I have to say my opinion has changed a lot about work in China. Again, because my views were shaped by media, I thought China had sweatshops on every corner and employees had no rights. I still get a lot of comments on my videos about mistreatment of workers and no worker rights because this is what the news reports. The report will say the factory mistreats employees or doesn't pay a fair wage. This creates the idea that employees don't have any rights and are mistreated, but oftentimes the report is designed to mislead the audience. I can't outright refute these claims because I haven't been to every factory in China, but I can say from my personal experience as a manager that it's actually really hard to fire people here in China and workers do have a lot of rights. Oftentimes these reports only focus on factories, but manufacturing only accounts for about 30% of the labor force in China. Around 22% of the labor force works in the agriculture sector and now 48% are employed in the service sector. My experience hiring and firing people here in China has actually been quite interesting, but the simple version kind of goes like this. When hiring someone, it is often based on likability and less on skills or degree. Most of the people I've worked with in China do not work in the same field they actually studied. This is because university entrance exams determine which degrees people are allowed to pursue. Many students around the world will pick their own degree, but in China it's a little different because it's based on your college entrance exam. And so many people will end up with degrees that aren't necessarily useful later in life. This is why when it comes to hiring, people are 
often hired based on their likability or their personality, especially for new or young graduates. When it comes to firing somebody, it's really different in China because it's really difficult to do. I was told many times that I couldn't fire somebody based on the contract they had or because they had worked at the company for X amount of years and therefore I couldn't get rid of them. There are a lot of labor laws that prevent employers from terminating contracts and it's all very tiresome from an employer standpoint, but really great for employees. This idea that China is a wasteland where the government controls everything and nobody has any rights is mostly fantasy made up by the news to bash China. I'm not saying China has the best working conditions or even great working conditions. There's still a lot of harassment and other issues that workers have to deal with, but they do have a lot of rights. And it is difficult to terminate somebody who's been working for a long time, especially office workers. The next thing on our list is a little different, but I wanna talk about geography. Before moving to China, I didn't realize how big the country actually is and how diverse the landscapes are here. Because there's not a lot of foreign tourism in China, even less now, many places aren't shown on blogs or YouTube. In 2010, when I first arrived, I remember searching for cool places to visit and finding little or no information online. Only a few blogs wrote about tourist attractions and most of the blogs weren't accurate because China is developing so quickly. This is such a shame because China is a beautiful country with many diverse locations. From beaches to deserts to mountains to grasslands, there are a lot of places in China that are really beautiful. But because this doesn't really end up in foreign media and because a lot of travelers don't come here and take pictures and videos, many people end up thinking that China is this kind of polluted wasteland because that's what they see on the news. That might be a little harsh, but you get what I'm saying. The news reports often talk about China's pollution problems and never really show the beautiful landscapes or mountains or beaches. Another thing the news often likes to show is how many people are actually in China and this is one of the ones that I was not prepared for. And I don't think anything can really prepare you for just how many people are here. So next on our list is population. I was always told growing up that China has a lot of people and we even have jokes about it in the US, which I won't repeat here. But I thought I was prepared for the crowds and to be honest, I wasn't. In the US, I lived in a city with about 400,000 people in a Bay Area that had around 3 million people. This is considered pretty large in the US, but for China, 400,000 people is like a small district or area in a city. The current district I live in has a population of 1.2 million people. I don't think any news report or media or movie would have prepared me for how many people are actually here in China. You know, it's just, <laughs> the crowds are pretty insane. And now the funny thing is because I've adjusted to these crowds, whenever I go back home to the US or if I'm traveling in Europe, it always feels empty. I'm like, where are all the people? My views on cities and public transportation have changed a lot because Chinese cities have a high population density, which means it's possible to build many subways and bus routes and make it very easy for people to get around. It is just a different level of management and planning when dealing with so many people, which brings us to our next point. But before we talk about the next point, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps the videos and I'm gonna have more videos like this in the future. Okay, let's jump back in with point number seven, which is the Chinese government. My views have changed a lot on the Chinese government after living here for 12 years. Before moving here, I had very American opinions on the Chinese government. And those opinions were that the Chinese government was mistreating its people and it's this terrible communist government. I was extremely surprised when I moved here and found out that the government isn't that extreme and actually is working to improve people's lives. Now before you click off this video or start commenting that I was paid to say this, let me be very clear. I don't support everything the Chinese government does, but I have to say what I've seen is very different than what's reported in the American news. There are many things that are reported that I can't personally verify, and if they are true, it would be awful. All I can really speak about is my 12 years living here and what I've seen. I know that when I moved in 2010, Beijing only had 12 subway lines, and now it has 25 lines. The high-speed rail only had around 8,000 kilometers of rail, and now has over 40,000 kilometers. In 2010, the average income nationwide was around 40,000 renminbi per year, and now it is over 100,000 renminbi. 
The point I'm making is we have to look at progress and measurable outcomes to determine the effectiveness of a government. Governments are supposed to improve the lives of the people they govern, and the majority of people's lives, specifically Han Chinese, have improved a lot in the last 40 years, and I have personally seen it with my own eyes over the last 12 years. But with that said, I will say that some things have slowed down since 2013 and have even regressed a bit. If you know what happened in 2013, then you'll understand the point I'm making. So moving on to the next one. Here are three pictures. What do they have in common? If you're from the US, you might not even be able to tell the difference. But these three pictures are three different traditional dresses from three different countries. One of the biggest issues in America in relationship to China and Asia is lumping all cultures together. Before coming to China, you could have shown me anything from Asian cultures, and I probably would have guessed it was from Japan or maybe Korea. American movies and media oftentimes mix up Asian cultures and even mix up cultures within a country. A good example is Disney's recent remake of Mulan. The movie mixed up geography, minority cultures, history, and more. These types of movies lead to more confusion and misunderstanding. I'll be the first to admit that I am not an expert on Chinese culture or Chinese history, but I do feel like I've learned a lot by living here for 12 years. I also know that many other Asian cultures have been influenced by Chinese culture, and China has a long cultural history dating back thousands of years. Before moving here, I was very ignorant of Asian cultures, and now I'm a little less ignorant. Uh, I have to say, I'm no expert, but I have learned a lot by living here, and I have a new appreciation for Asian cultures and specifically Chinese culture. Speaking of media and movies, coming in at number five on the list is Chinese media. If you've been following this channel for a little while, you probably know that I recently did a video about Chinese media, and in that video I talked about how Chinese media is really bad at engaging a foreign audience. What I didn't mention was I had actually never seen Chinese media in the US when I was living there. I had never heard of CCTV, Xinhua, Global Times, or any other Chinese media before moving to China. What I had heard was that there is no freedom of speech in China and that everything is censored here. Unfortunately, this is kind of true. When I worked in media here, I had to run everything by a censor and even requested a new censor because the one I had was super strict. What I learned is that everything is nuanced and that there are no real clear cut rules about what you can and can't say. And because everybody is scared to say the wrong thing, you end up with a lot of self-censorship, which is a big problem for media companies here. I feel it hurts China's message globally because many stories go untold or foreign media tells the story but twists it to fit their narrative. I think this issue could be solved, but the reality is right now it is very difficult for reporters and content creators in China. I would love to see more creative stories and stronger opinions from content creators and news agencies here, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It seems the only clear message being sent right now is that China no longer wants foreigners living here. And that brings us to our next point, is China anti-foreigner? This is a hard question to answer because there are too many opinions and policies to have a clear answer. I can only speak to my personal experiences living here for 12 years, but I can say that things have changed a lot along with my opinion. Because when I first arrived here, local people were really excited to see a foreigner and even more excited when I told them that I was from the US. People have always been really friendly, and even today, many are still excited to meet a foreigner. On the ground, generally speaking, people are friendly. But from the government policies and official accounts, it seems that they don't really want foreigners anymore. This has gotten really bad over the last three years because the media has turned the population against foreigners. Many reports about local outbreaks worded the news to make it seem like foreigners were to blame for the issue. They didn't always clearly explain that the person was a Chinese returning from overseas but labeled it as imported, leading the audience to believe it was a foreigner. And recently a Weibo post went viral and made a lot of us really angry. The government will put out content about Chinese being attacked in America, but then turn around and post something that could create similar situations within China. Before moving to China, I had very little knowledge about China, but I was always told that it was closed off and not very friendly but I found that not to be true once I arrived. Now I'm on the fence about this point. It seems most people I meet and talk with are open-minded and happy to meet a foreigner. Many have even invited me to their hometown and if I took them up on that offer, they would 
host me and show me around their city. So many people are very friendly, but the government policies have changed and has made it harder for foreigners to live here. We've made it to the top three ways my views have changed on China after moving here. And I would really love for you to hit the subscribe button because it allows me to stay motivated because I know people actually watch this and are interested in this type of content. But let's jump right back in with number three, which is business. I was always told China was a communist country and that the government controlled all business and means of production. This isn't true. While there are many state-owned enterprises, there are also many private enterprises. This idea that the government owns everything isn't entirely true. Many people will point to the property market, land ownership, and state-owned enterprises and say, see, the government owns and controls everything. But those people aren't being honest or haven't done enough research. What I've noticed is that many people are allowed to start their own businesses. For small businesses, there are many regulations and licenses that you have to get before you can start, and they are tiresome, but you know, once you do it, you can start a business. It seems the government gets more involved when it comes to high-tech businesses or businesses of national interest. The tech sector has seen a lot of restrictions lately along with the education industry, but the World Bank still ranks China in 31st place for ease of doing business with a score of 77.9 out of 100. My opinion has changed a lot because I live here and I've seen the economic activity. It seems every few months there's a new shop or coffee spot or some kind of restaurant and there doesn't seem to be this you know, government control and that nobody can do any type of economic activity without the government's approval. I'm not saying it's perfect here and it is still very hard for foreigners to start a business here but it isn't what is reported in the news about this government control and nobody's allowed to have any kind of economic freedom. Moving on to number two on the list is pollution. It seems that in the early 2000s, every news report about China showed how polluted and dirty the country was. And it was a major problem and it still is a problem today, but things have changed a lot. Before coming to China, I knew a little bit about the problem, but didn't expect it to be so bad. I lived through the Beijing air apocalypse in 2013, and I remember days that I couldn't see one or two meters in front of me. The PM 2.5 was off the charts and children had to stay home, but a lot has changed since 2014. Around 2014, the government started to take the problem more seriously, and from about 2016 on until now, uh, things have greatly improved, and there's blue skies most days. And I remember my opinion went from, ah, it can't be that bad, getting here being like, oh my God, get me out of here, to now being like, okay, I can live here, it's, it's not that bad. And the data supports my feelings because nowadays we have more good days than bad days in a year. We will still have a few bad days here and there, but overall things have improved, and with that, my opinion has improved too. Speaking of changing my mind, we've made it to number one on this list, and I hope I've changed your mind, if you're still here, to subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's move on to number one, which is technology. When I was growing up, every time something broke, we joked that it must be from China. Most of the products produced in China seemed cheap and low quality, and that included tech products. But in recent years, my opinion on Chinese tech has changed. Now there are quality Chinese tech companies like DJI, Huawei, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, and Xiaomi, just to name a few. These companies, along with others, have greatly improved over the last few years and now produce quality products at affordable prices. I used to have a Huawei phone and it worked great, and I think we'll continue to see these companies and new companies grow in the coming years. The Chinese tech sector could be the strongest in the future. Only time will tell, but for now it is much harder to make the joke about everything from China breaks. There you have it, 12 ways my opinions have changed or remained on China after living here for 12 years. If you wanna see how my opinions have changed on the US, click here and don't forget to leave a comment below to let me know how your opinions have changed over time. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.